Hello everybody, this is something a little bit different. This uh, this is an early game, but it is not a game that is currently in early access, nor is it a game that is in open beta or anything like that. This is actually a game that is in its very early alpha stages right now and is very much unfinished, so do bear that in mind with the footage in the background, but here we go. This is called Eternal Edge Plus. I don't have any information right now as to when this is going to release or anything like that, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna state you know any dates or anything because I don't have any. But I will say that it does the the Steam page for this does say 2019, and the fact that it is uh, this early in development makes me think that it is probably going to release into early access because you know obviously there's no way that a game this early in its stages of development can actually you know go from alpha to finished in like four months and still be in 2019. That'd sort of be like if you ordered pizza and it came in like 10 minutes. And uh, you, you answer the door like, I mean, thanks for the speed and everything, but like, there's no way you had time to properly make this. So what's in the box? So yeah, I'm guessing this is probably going to be an early access uh, release at some point, although don't take my word for it exclusively. And uh, other things that kind of make me think that is the fact that it has very, um, very common builds released. So that it seems like they're sort of uh, doing the whole developing in commits and things like that to make it uh, easier to release different forms of it in, in an early access sort of system quicker, and also the fact that it has a bit of a tutorial already, and as I mentioned before, tutorials are often some of the later done things, unless you're in early access, in which case it's actually nice to have at least some limited tutorials to help hook people in the early game and keep them uh, trying it out for you. So again, that's just my thoughts, don't take my word for it or anything. Eternal Edge Plus is going to be an action RPG, an open world action RPG, with some familiar elements, such as uh, it seems there's probably going to be some sort of crafting or upgrade system, because you can get crafting materials. Although that is not in the game right now, as I can tell. And uh, a very, um, really kind of a Breath of the Wild feeling is what it gives me a little bit. Obviously it's not nearly as polished, it's an alpha, but it gives me a, a sense of a game that is similar to that. And uh, it has even very Zelda-esque dungeons and things so far, and I think that that might be sort of the, the general feel that they're actually going for here in, in terms of like, you know, what, what sort of open world RPG is it going to be. I think it's going to be something in that kind of range. And uh, even the music is actually very Breath of the Wild-esque, lots of piano, very relaxing, very pretty, and also a little bit Minecraft-esque. Honestly, the music in this game is really, really good already, so hopefully that continues to be the case. But the game itself uh, mostly consists of roaming around the world, having a, uh, a main quest line that you're meant to follow at your own pace, and then lots of side quests to find as you go and explore the various places, basically using uh, larger landmarks as navigational aids. You know, you see like this crazy chapel thing off of the distance, maybe walk towards it and see what's over there. You see some sort of like dungeon marker on your map, maybe go towards that and see what it is. It, it, it's that kind of open world RPG where you're sort of guided by your own eyes and wishes, and you have a main quest to follow, but you have so much else to do at the same time, so it's kind of a, a play at your own at your own pace sort of experience. And uh, also, being an action RPG, it's very loot-based, it has lots and lots of loot. Uh, enemies tend to be able to drop their weapons or equipment based off of them in some way, uh, like their armor, only formed into some sort of hollow shell that you can wear, which is kind of cool. And uh, you can pick it up and wear it, and uh, that is sort of the, the main character progression method, is to actually, you know, improve yourself via these bits of loot that you'll find dropped off of enemies, and of course going in dungeons and the like, you'll also find treasure chests also just around the world, and you can find upgrades in those as well. Uh, one cool system in the game currently that I really like is the ability to combine uh, identical pieces of equipment to empower them. You'll notice that equipment actually has an experience gauge underneath it, and you can uh, combine other pieces of the same type of equipment with it to increase that experience gauge and it will level up as you, if you do it enough and that will increase the base stats that the equipment already has so it's sort of like a an upgrade system that doesn't require you to go anywhere or collect specific upgrade materials it's something that you can do from your inventory with just extra pieces of gear so that it makes actually picking up duplicates and things worthwhile for more than just selling it actually allows you to get more powerful in the field which is a nice little feature there's also some uh, Zelda-esque items, like for instance you'll notice I have some bombs in the background here, and they work exactly how you would think. You'd be careful not to blow yourself up, uh, use them to destroy big rocks, use them to take care of big groups of enemies if you feel you have enough to spare, things like that, and it works very well. And there's also going to be a magic system of some sort, although from what I can tell it's not in the game yet, but I'm guessing it's going to use the same quick slots that the tools like bombs use. And uh, that I'm really excited to see, because I, I tend to really enjoy sort of 
off-kilter magic systems, and this seems like the kind of game that would have kind of an odd one. It would have a very different way of doing things, maybe even something a little bit contrived, and honestly, that's actually kind of what I'm looking for. I want an odd magic system in a game like this, because it seems to... It, it seems like it would make more sense to be sort of strange, and not necessarily operate in the way that you would expect just, like, getting a spell. You know, kind of like how magic works in Zelda, oftentimes. It's like items like dense fire and the like that you have in your inventory that you can sort of use as spells and magical things in those games have often worked in kind of odd ways and i feel like this would be the perfect platform for that same kind of idea and i hope that's the way that it goes but we'll see uh, the game is also being updated very frequently, I should add. Uh, you'll actually notice in the background that you'll see two different versions of the inventory screen because it's actually being updated at such a pace that uh, even just in between recording sessions, things have changed noticeably, and the uh, inventory screen has actually gotten much easier to use and better looking. So, yeah, I, of course, do have to stress that the game is an alpha, so a lot of it's very unfinished, but so far, what's actually here, the sort of platform that it hopes to build from, is a really, a really hopeful one. It's one that has a lot of potential. Uh, the art style is pretty cool. It's very, it's very glowy. I think maybe a little bit too glowy in the daytime sometimes. The bloom is a little much. It gets kind of bright, and there's no way to adjust it currently, but, you know, that's something that can be changed later. But, uh, the overall, like, art style, the aesthetic of the game is really interesting. It uses a, uh, it almost looks voxel-esque, but not like Minecraft or anything like that. Not like Cube World or anything of that sort. It's got a very, very high fantasy appearance. And, uh, that makes the ruins and other buildings in the distance and the like that this game has more interesting looking to, to, just to see. Because the actual art style of them, uh... It doesn't clash so much as it stands out, so you, when you see huge trees or huge ruined buildings and stuff in the distance, you're immediately drawn to them because of the way that everything looks. It has a, a very neat kind of post-high fantasy, I guess you could say, look to it that's pretty cool. You'll also notice in the background right now that I'm going through a dungeon that looks like an old-school Zelda dungeon, and that's on purpose. Uh, there are dungeons in the game. This one you can just find from bombing a rock, and I'm sure there are plenty more, or will be plenty more, and uh, it has a top-down 2D gameplay kind of experience to it, like a classic Zelda game or, or something like that. And uh, it's even called a retro dungeon, you find 8-bit keys and things, so it's the, you know, it's clear the uh, the influences here, it's very much worn on its sleeve. But it does work, it is not just emulating the style of dungeon, it does mesh it into its own game mechanics quite well, and I can imagine that once you get some spells and some other abilities and things to use, and other tools to solve puzzles with and the like, these dungeons could get very, very interesting very quickly. And uh, I'm definitely also excited to see that. That's actually one element that the game doesn't really show off right now, is puzzle solving, because in an RPG like this, you, you know, you kind of expect it, you would expect to have some, some puzzles to solve, and the dungeons do get dangerously close to having some sort of puzzle-ish uh, moments, but as of right now, there aren't any at least that I've run into, of course. There aren't any actual puzzles, even like switch puzzles and stuff like that. I expect at some point when the game gets further developed, those will actually be present, and uh, I very much hope so. Because right now the open world actually has quite a bit of interesting exploration to do, despite the fact that the playable area is quite small. Uh, it's still very interesting, and the stuff that you can see in the distance that you can't quite get to yet, because it's not done, it's not in the game yet, is, um, is really hopeful. You, know, you look at that and you're like, wow. That looks cool. I want to explore that. I bet that's fun. And that's the kind of feeling that I want to get from a game like this. You want to get that sort of wonderlust feeling from a, a very large open world RPG that makes you want to just wander around and see the cool things. You want there to be lots of cool things to see and to reach. And uh, this game seems to very much understand that already and already have that kind of idea in its DNA. And uh, a lot of its gameplay is very much based, or it looks like it's going to be very much based around sort of self-fueled exploration besides the main quest as you go around and find unique and fun things to do to make yourself stronger, to get new loot, to just see what's out there. And that's kind of what I want, you know, I want to see this game develop in that direction, I very much hope that it does go in that sort of wanderlust-like direction of uh, just exploring around, finding cool things, and, and seeing what's beyond the next hill, basically, because that's, uh, that's a really fun feeling, and there actually aren't a tremendous number of really good RPGs that actually do that, so I'd like to see this game very much sort of hook on to that, in a sense. There's also a fair amount of uh, improvement to be made to things like the combat, which they have already been improving noticeably in the updates so far, with things like, you know, better feedback, better animation quality, better animation blending, stuff like that, and uh, I think my main, if I was to, you know, come up with some alpha gripes, some things to, uh, you know, be looked at as it develops, one of my main gripes is really the, uh, the combat range that you have is very, very short, like, 
deceptively short. All the weapons that I found so far have incredibly short swing arcs, which means you have to get very, very close to enemies, but your swing kind of roots you in place, which means that it's easy for enemies to just walk right out of your swing arc because it's so short that by the time you actually do it, you stop moving, they keep moving, and you miss them. And it's easy to do this repeatedly so that sometimes combat feels a bit more like swinging wiffle bats at each other, hoping, you know, one of you hits. It's a bit weird. And there's kind of the opposite problem with a lot of enemy swings, <coughs> sorry, enemy swings, and that they will hit you even when you're nowhere near them. It's easy to roll behind an enemy, but time it just so that the enemy's attack somehow still hits you, almost like you're playing an MMO or something where the sort of, uh, you don't really use like a direct hit system, it's more like a sort of client-based thing. It feels a bit like that sometimes, and I think that if those kinds of, uh, hit detection and otherwise kind of, uh, somewhat anemic feeling bits of the combat could be shored up, it would actually be pretty satisfying because it has a good, uh, it already has a good base to it, you know, the weapons are fun, the enemies have some fun attacks, you can jump attack, I would like to see maybe some more variety in attacks you can do, like besides just a normal swing combo and some jump attacks, maybe some charged attacks or something like that, and of course maybe even having uh, some weapons have specific uh, skills that only they can do, or maybe every weapon has a skill that it can do, like, you know, longsword type weapons have something specific and axe type weapons have something specific, and then that would also add to the variety in loot that you can find, because you may find some epic or legendary gear that has skills that no other gear has, it's just specifically on that one. I guess kind of like Dark Souls, you could say, with the weapon art system. Something kind of like that. I think that would add a lot of variety to the combat, and uh, that's kind of what it needs right now. Being an alpha and all, it, even the uh, the current enemy variety and things is pretty good, and the, uh, the enemy feedback is pretty good as well. It gives you lots of chances to block and to dodge and to actually, you know, learn a a combat system that means you're not just flailing at each other watching numbers fly by and hoping that you die last, basically. It does feel better than that already. So increasing that combat variety and increasing the uh, the satisfaction of the feedback and things is definitely a priority, in my opinion, in terms of actually shoring up the combat, which is, of course, very important in an open-world RPG because that's a lot of what you're going to be doing. Uh, and uh, it's also something that you're going to be working towards making yourself better at because part of the appeal of these games is to explore and get loot. So obviously you want to use that loot in combat. So yeah, uh, the actual exploration layer though is really satisfying already because the world is just so cool looking and there's so much interesting stuff to find. And uh, I'm seeing lots of little bits here and there like this, ab <clears throat> this abandoned village I'm about to come up against. I can't talk today for some reason. It's a really cool little moment that makes me think that if there are lots of things like this in the game once it's actually finished and each of these areas has maybe a side quest or has some uh, interactable bits to it and is you know, more than just a landmark, but it's actually a place that you can explore and find some things in. It, it makes me kind of uh, excited for the possibilities that this game actually has, because it almost gives me a bit of like a, I guess like a Dragon Age Inquisition feel, and or a Breath of the Wild feel in terms of its exploration. You know, you're constantly seeing these things off the distance, and you just sort of go to them. I guess the Elder Scrolls games have that going for them as well. And uh, actually having memorable moments in these interesting places is is good, it's really important for a game like this, so in terms of the exploration part of the game, I think that if they flesh out and focus on these little bits here and there that make for interesting, uh, like, memory-worthy encounters as you go across the world, that will be a really good uh, sort of way to flesh out this whole exploration part of it. So, all in all, I think it's a really solid uh, foundation. It's a really good start for a very interesting game. Obviously it's an alpha right now, so there's very little in terms of content to actually comment on as much as it's more about commenting on the direction that it can go and what it seems to be wanting to do. So uh, that's what I wanted to say. I wanted to say that uh, there should be some eyes on this because I haven't really heard anything else about it besides when they offered it to me to take a look at it. and I was like, I've never heard of this before. This looks really cool. This, this is an art style I haven't quite seen like this before. This is an interesting little concept and I had no idea that this game even existed, which is kind of a shame. So hopefully with tips like this, with uh, with ideas in terms of where the development is going to go, this game actually starts to get some attention and uh, kind of gets the ball rolling in terms of uh, people wanting to actually play it and wanting to see more of it. Because I think it has a lot of potential to become something really, really interesting, and I'm I'm pretty excited actually to follow it through its development and to see where it actually goes. And with the speed and frequency at which the updates are coming right now, it makes me think that there was already quite a lot of planning involved in the development of the game and uh, in terms of where they want it to go, and they already have like some roadmaps and stuff in terms of where they want to send it. So I hope that we we see it fleshed out and we, we see it continue to grow and. If you want to check out this game, just wishlist it on Steam right now. I'll put the link in the description below this video so that you can uh, keep track of it and maybe it'll release into early access or something at some point and you can try it out yourself. So this is the early alpha impressions of Eternal Edge Plus. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like it. If you did not, feel free to dislike it and tell me why. And uh, yeah, this is definitely one to keep an eye on. I will absolutely be uh, following this further because it is very interesting to me. <laughs>
Thanks again, you guys, very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.